Hi everyone, Ford here from Son of a Stitch and welcome back to another episode of Son of a Stitch Tube. This is episode 5 of my series on basic cross stitching techniques. Uh, you can watch 1 through 4 to get a copy of the pattern for the project that we're all making together. And uh, some instruction on how to get started. Uh, if you've been following along, we've basically gotten as far as uh, completing some of the cross stitches. And uh, at the last video, I said to go ahead and just complete all of the cross stitches in the pattern. Uh, I'm lazy, so I'm going to use a particular technique called a magic box. Uh, these are really handy. All you got to do is uh, get yourself one of these magic boxes. And then uh, take your pattern and just put it right in there. And then it stitches itself. Isn't that handy? Okay, so now that the magic box has done its work, we can go ahead and get started on stitching the text portion of this pattern. So let's go ahead and take a look at our printed pattern here, and I'll show you what we're working with. Now we've done a bunch of cross stitches or full stitches so far, but what we're going to work on now is these little triangular blocks here with a small symbol in the corner. Those indicate fractional stitches. Now depending on the context, that can be either a quarter stitch or a three-quarter stitch, or sometimes a little of each, um, but I'll show you how to do that later. Uh, the rest of this is made up by back stitch, and I'm going to show you how to do that in the next episode. So we'll just do all of these fill stitches for now. So I've got my needle all threaded already here, and since I'm going to be using the loop start method, I've got a loop on one end and a needle on the other. Now, especially when you're using loop start, I recommend that you not have your first stitch be a fractional stitch. So I'm going to want to actually start somewhere else. I'm going to want to start on this first full stitch underneath the fractional stitches there. So we'll just count over from a frame of reference here, the bottom corner of this square. There's two empty columns between it, and it's one below the fourth square. So I'll count up to the fourth square, count over two, and that's where I'm going to start my first full stitch on the staff of that G. So we'll just pull this most of the way through. I've got a little tangle there. We'll fix that. Then bring my needle down in there. Put it through the loop that I've created. And it's started. Loop start is a beautiful thing, isn't it? I'm going to put a needle minder on here because I keep having to set this down and I hate it when my needle's flapping all over the place. Needle minder is basically a strong magnet or a pair of strong magnets that hold each other through the fabric and then they hold your needle in place like this. Boop! All right, so we've done the bottom half of that first full stitch. So now our next stitch up here is going to be a fractional stitch, which means it's going to have to pierce through the middle of the fabric. So a three-quarter stitch, like the one that we're about to do, consists of a half stitch like this, and then a one quarter stitch right here. So a half plus a quarter is a three quarter stitch. But that quarter stitch is going to pierce through the middle of the fabric. And there are four different orientations that a three quarter stitch can take. There's a top right corner like the one I just drew. And then this one over here on the R, we've got a bottom left corner. So the quarter stitch is in the bottom left corner of that one. Over here, We've got a bottom right corner, three-quarter stitch. That's the one that's at the top of the O there. And then on the bottom of the right side of the W, we've got a top left corner, three-quarter stitch. So those are the three different versions of the three-quarter stitch that we're going to do. But they're all basically the same thing, which is a one-quarter and a half. Now, normally I do all of my half stitches like this, and then I come back the other way and do the other half stitch of each one. But when doing a three-quarter stitch, I like to do the quarter stitch first, because that way when I come over it with the half stitch like this, 
it will cover up the place that I had to pierce through and I don't have to worry about my needle snagging and pulling on that half stitch that's already there. So the other thing that I like to do in order to make it easier is I keep a sharp needle on hand. This can be from the sewing aisle or it can be an embroidery or a cruel needle or even a pin. But if you just pierce through that spot in the middle of the square where you need to bring the quarter stitch through, then having that hole pre-punched, just like pre-drilling and woodworking, will make that easier. So I'll just pre-punch this hole here, stick that on my needle winder, and then I'll come up through that hole that I just punched to make the one quarter stitch. So let's take a look here. I'll show you what I've done. You can see I've got the half stitch. That's the first full stitch on the G there. And then I've got the quarter stitch, which is the first portion of the three quarter stitch that we're doing. So now I will just do the other half stitch that makes up that three quarter stitch. And that'll finish up the three quarter stitch that makes up that top angle on my G there. So you can see that I've got that half stitch and then I've got this little T-shaped triangular stitch topping off the top of that staff for the G. So now I'm going to do the rest of the full stitches on the G. I've already done the top one, so I need to do two more full stitches before I come to another three-quarter stitch. So speed this up. Okay, so my next stitch here is a top right corner three-quarter stitch. So I'm again going to need to pierce a hole in my fabric. Bring my needle up on top to begin with. I'm going to punch the hole that I need to. And bring my needle back down through. And that'll make the one-quarter portion of that three-quarter stitch. And then I'll do the other half stitch of that three quarter stitch. And that will make the full three quarter. Now you'll notice that I did that stitch in the opposite order of the one above. And that's just because I always do the quarter stitch first and then the half. So we'll cross all of our full stitches here. And then we'll move over to the other side of the G. Now, uh, when crossing fabric that is not going to be stitched over, that's open fabric like this, it's always important to make sure that your thread is not moving at a vertical line or a horizontal line or a 45 degree angle. Because if so, it'll line up with the holes underneath and you'll be able to see the thread through it and you don't want to do that. So I try to make sure that it has a slope of one half or two or something like that so that it's not lining up with the holes. So I can bring this over here to a position that means that I'm not um, lining up with the holes underneath and making my thread visible. Well, this is another three quarter stitch at the top of the G here. So I just need to punch a hole through the middle of my fabric at the correct position for that fractional stitch. This is not necessary, but it makes it a lot easier, and you'll tend to have tidier and cleaner three-quarter stitches if you pre-punch that hole, because you can be more precise with that sharp needle instead of just ramming the blunt one through. So there's no other adjacent stitches, so I'll just do the three-quarter stitch on the top of the G here. And now again, I'm going to carefully select my starting position for the bottom rail of the right side of the G to make sure that my thread isn't visible from the front. And that just means mostly don't go vertical and don't go, go horizontal when running a thread that far. Now this is only like two empty squares of fabric, so I'm fine running my thread that far. I don't usually run it much farther than that. So we've got two full stitches here, and then one three-quarter stitch at the bottom as well. Speed this up a little. And now you can see the pattern while I work on it. So this is the stitch I'm about to do right here. Punch the fabric.
Now we'll cross these other ones. So now we've done all of the full stitches and three quarter stitches that make up the G. Like I said, I'll show you how to do all that back stitching in the next episode so that we can do those outlines and uh, bridge the gaps between the, the fills there. But this only shows you how to do a particular type, which is a three quarter stitch that is surrounded by unstitched fabric. That's not always how it works in a pattern, so I'm going to show you how to do a different type of stitch here. First, we'll show you here. I got three quarter stitches and full stitches surrounded. These are all the ones that we've done so far. And you can see that that makes a nice little right angle or 45 degree angle, <clears throat> which makes it easier to add some more detail and shape there. So let's look at a pattern that has a three quarter stitch sharing a square with a one quarter stitch. So this pattern here has got three different colors. We've got a red that makes up a sort of a button thing. We've got two different grays and you can see that they're sharing these squares in various configurations. So when you've got a square with two different colors in it divided by a diagonal line like this, uh, that's usually going to indicate that you want to put a three-quarter stitch and a one-quarter stitch to make a total of one full stitch. Uh, some people do a three-quarter stitch of each but that's one and a half stitches in a square and it's too much. Uh, so what I recommend doing is doing the color that's supposed to be on top, in this case the red of the button, in this big red button. Uh, do that one in the three-quarter stitch. So you'll do a half of it and a quarter. Now the color that's supposed to be underneath or behind, you do a one-quarter stitch. That way you get a nice, solid, clean line of the object that's supposed to be on top, and you get a little more of that color in the square. That helps create the dimension and the detail. So we would do it the same thing here. Now down here, we've got three different layers. We've got the red on top, we've got the dark gray underneath, and then we've got the light gray underneath that, the dark gray making the shadow of the button. So we do a three quarter of the red and a quarter of the dark gray, and then down here, we do a three quarter of the dark gray with a one quarter of the light gray underneath. And that'll give us our layers and our dimensions. So that'll create a nice, solid line all the way around and make it easier to see the detail that we're trying to create. All right, thanks so much for joining me. That's it for this episode. Next time I'm going to show you how to do the back stitching. That's the outline stitch that surrounds that text as well as all of the blocks on the border. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe as well as find me in my other presences online like uh, facebook.com slash sonofastitchxs, uh, sonofastitch on Instagram, or of course my store sonofastitch.etsy.com. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.